Battling Bella Abzug was a New York political icon in the 70s, who in her political career as a member of Congress, as well as in her personal life, was a pioneer who fought for the rights of women, inspiring a new generation to take up leadership roles. 20 years after Bella Abzug's passing, her daughter, Liz, has continued her vision through her nonprofit organization, the Bella Abzug Leadership Institute, where young women and girls go through free courses, workshops, and training in preparation for becoming future leaders. Joining me now to talk about her organization, her mission, and her mother's legacy is founder and executive director of the Bella Abzug Leadership Institute, Liz Abzug. Liz, it's nice to have you here. Nice with to be us. here. Thank I said before, I had interviewed your mom years and years ago, so it's nice sort of closing of the circle to chat with you also. Hey. Let's talk about the Institute. Uh, what, what, what was the idea behind it? Well, I wanted to make a living legacy, first of all, to my mother's life and her work as a civil rights lawyer, as a politician, as a congresswoman, and one of the leading feminists of the 20th century leaders. Also, my own work as a lawyer, professor, and as a feminist activist in my, all my adult life, I wanted to say we need to pass this on to the current and next generation of young women and girls so that they can grab the mantle of leadership and finish the unfinished business of full gender, to achieve full gender equality. This might sound a fairly simplistic question. I don't know if there's a simple answer, but oftentimes people will say, look, women outnumber men in colleges now. Yet when you look at the leadership roles, you're not seeing that same type of, of relationship. Why? The disparity is, is really great. Um, what I feel is, is that, and that's why we formed Bali, the Bell Abs and Leadership Institute, is that oftentimes women and young girls feel so culturally stereotyped that they have to not be aggressive, not be you know, ambitious, not go to the top, and not sit at the central part, parts of the table. And what we need to do, there's really a problem in the fact that there's still a self-esteem problem. There's still a failure to say, you know, based on my experience, based on my talent, I can get and assume the top leadership positions in every sector. And so therefore, why would that be when you have some of the most accomplished women, not only in medical school, law school, more than men in law school, the only area where we're flagging a little behind is in engineering, but why would that be then? That's because there's still this stereotype of the way society views young women against young men, and that young women have, in, you know, have incorporated that into their psyches against their best interests. And right. so what we're trying to do is unwind that. And as a father of a daughter, and, and you and I were talking before, my, my daughter fortunately has done marvelously. She's a, she's a cancer surgeon, she was an athlete in college. But I would see other girls around her thinking, you're smart, you're talented, why don't you step up also? Well, so, so my question is, what do you do now okay, at the Institute that helps young women to do that? All right, first I wanna say one thing about that. I'm a professor at Barnard College, which is a women's college in Columbia University for many years, urban studies, I teach urban studies. And I have to say that in all the years I've been teaching up there, I will have girls raise their hands and apologize for asking questions. We call that ritualized apology, whereas boys will never do that. I've yet to see a guy do that in my college classes. At the Institute, what we do is we, combination of leadership skills, how to make a public speech, how to debate. We are an unusual organization in this country in that we bring together leadership skills, self-esteem, empowerment, civil advocacy, and debate. And we show girls who have never debated, some who are on debate teams, and some who are competitive debaters all together, middle school, high school, and college from the tri-state area and from across the country, how you really grab these techniques so that any kid young woman going forward, whether it's in high school, college, really feels a sense of strength and empowerment and that they can't be talked down to and that they can intellectualize and articulate the social most critical issues today. It's interesting because I've seen an evolution and, and maybe you are seeing also. I've been teaching up at, at Yale a seminar now for 10 years. Oh, that's great. And, and I have marvelous students. They're, they're, they're great kids. I'm sure you see the same thing. Same thing. But I'm seeing, first of all, more women in my seminar than men routinely. That's correct. about 150 to 250 applications each year and then there's a selection process. And, and you're see, seeing the women more, much more assertive, I'm sure, than you saw in your teaching career earlier. So how are you then selecting the young women for the Institute? Yeah. Where are you looking to find okay, them? Okay, well, we, we train girls from the New York City. When I formed Bali, it was to target brilliant or underserved, disadvantaged girls, first-generation immigrants, young women of color, of all colors, of course, 
And now we train in all the five boroughs, plus New Jersey, Long Island, Westchester, and kids are coming in from the country. They apply, we interview every applicant. We pride ourselves on the amazing diversity, not only of our kids, but of the trainers that I have working there. And that's at, important. With me. And it's very important. And furthermore, we do something very unique. Because I'm a professor, I've decided to try this. Train middle school, high school, and college together in the same training class. So that Why together? Because most people would think, well, you know what, they're different ages, no, different interests, no, keep them apart. We train to the highest level. I tell my trainers, I tell my staff. Why that is, is that this, the college girls mentor the high school girls, and the high school girls mentor the you know, the girls who are going That's to high school. That's a great school. approach. And therefore, it's peer mentoring. So that the, the, the environment is safe and challenging and, it's, you know, and, and so, so self-esteem building and safe for young women to share their concerns, their agonies, their ecstasies, their, the violence that many of them experience in their homes, right? And we help them get beyond it. Well, it sounds like just a fabulous institute, fabulous work. I can't imagine a better legacy for your mom than, I, than the institute. I thank you. Good luck and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks a lot. Thank you for Take having me. Take care.